Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at something you have the capability for and may not even know it, and that is that your amateur HF transceiver is very likely also a general coverage HF receiver, meaning it can receive anything on the medium uh, wave, such as uh, uh, AM broadcast stations, all the way up to 30 megahertz, and anything in between. You can listen to WWV, you can listen to OCB if you want to, and you can uh, listen to all kinds of things. And what I'm going to focus on today is the so-called shortwave broadcast bands. Yes, there are shortwave broadcasters, just like there are uh, regular medium wave AM broadcasters for your local, except these try for an international audience. While there is not as much activity as there used to be before the internet became pervasive, there's still quite a bit up there. There are a number of religious stations, uh, but there are also still stations from other countries that broadcast to North America. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, uh, let's look at the uh, ICOM 7300 and see how you would uh, set it to tune to a frequency outside a ham band. That's what the little GEN is for. I also want to introduce you to a, uh, a website that will give you the frequency schedules for all the myriad uh, broadcast stations there are around the world. Now, just because they're broadcasting doesn't mean we can hear them here in North America. But at night, sometimes those stations travel very long distances. I myself have heard stations such as Radio South Africa, um, let's see, Radio Japan, um, <laughs> Radio, uh, this is a fun one to listen to, Radio North Korea, uh, Deutsche Welle, which is the voice of Germany, of course, the BBC. I listened to Deutsche Welle in real time as people tore down the wall back there and they offered that if I were to send a postcard to such and such an address they'd give me a piece of the wall and they did they sent me back a little tiny piece that had a little bit of uh, paint on the uh, outside of it which was from the graffiti that uh, uh, completely covered the wall on the western side so let's take a look we're going to go to Wikipedia there's a Wikipedia page that I'm going to just quote from that shows what the bands are and where you can uh, turn your radio to listen. Okay, so we've got two web resources here. We've got Wikipedia, we've got the uh, shortwave broadcast schedule web page I'll show you. And um, we've got your own owner's manual that you'll want to take a look at so that you can see how to enter general coverage uh, uh, frequencies right into your radio. Shall we begin? Let's look at the section on Wikipedia. Uh, this is uh, wikipedia.org and the article is called Shortwave Bands. And this lists the international broadcast bands. Okay, this is the section on international broadcast bands. Uh, as it states here, most international broadcasters use amplitude modulation with 5 kilohertz, uh, which means 10 kilohertz bandwidth, but they're placed every 5 kilohertz. So sometimes you can use uh, one or the other of the sidebands to eliminate the interference on the other sideband. In other words, listen with lower sideband or upper sideband instead of just uh, AM. Okay, let's look at the band here, the frequency range uh, here. This 120 meter band um, is uh, 2.3 to 2.495 megahertz. It's mostly used in the tropical regions. Interestingly, um, you may be able to hear this uh, sometimes uh, in the evening uh, and you'll get uh, Latin American stations um, in the tropical area around the equator. 
And what's interesting about these is that they'll very often play, since they're playing to a domestic audience, they will very often play local music. It's music that you will never hear in the United States. 90 meters, 3.2 to 3.4, just below our 80 meter band. Uh, also, again, tropical band. Um, some long distance reception at night. Um, and uh, there is a Canadian time station, CHU, on 3.33 megahertz. 75 meters is right in the middle of our 80 meter ham band. Uh, but you won't usually hear it. It's mostly used in the Eastern Hemisphere after dark, not widely received in North and South America. A 60 meter band, again, tropical regions. Uh, note that these are different frequencies from the frequencies in our amateur 60 meter band. It's a case of using the same identifier for different things. This is 4.75 to 4.995 megahertz. Time stations like WWV use 5 megahertz. The 49 meter band is a good one. This is something that you'll hear lots of stations on 5.9 to 6.2 megahertz. Um, and sometimes there are stations a little outside of this on either side. This is a band that you can use uh, quite a bit, good year-round nighttime band. Uh, during the day you're not going to hear anything, but uh, at night. I used to listen at 5975 to BBC. They're no longer on that frequency, but uh, that was a favorite of mine to listen to uh, at night. You know, a lot of people have a television in their bedrooms, I had a shortwave receiver right by my desk, and uh, I'd listen to this and nod off. <laughs> uh, the 41 meter band here, uh, this is the one that interferes with the 40 meter band, uh, but note that it goes up to 7.45, so you can tune up. Uh, if you want, it, above 7.2 megahertz, when you hear a foreign broadcast band, switch your receiver over to AM and center it on that uh, carrier, and lo and behold, you'll hear some shortwave broadcast band. 31 megahertz is another major band. 31 megahertz, 9.4 to 9.9. It's most heavily used during, uh, uh, at night, really. Sometimes during the day, but mostly at night. Your best reception is in winter. Note that at 10 megahertz, there are several different time stations, WWV and WWVH uh, being two of them. Uh, 25 megahertz is generally best during summer. This is where you start to get, uh, when the sunspot cycle gets good, you'll start hearing um, these. It says right now best during summer and the period before and after sunset. That's the uh, gray line. 22 megahertz uh, again, all of the rest of these are better in uh, when we have good sunspots, and you'll hear these sometimes uh, in, the, in the daytime. I remember on a couple of these bands here, uh, during the day in the morning, I was listening to Radio Australia, which was broadcasting at night, and they had their Good Morning America show on, which was fun. The Australian stations are fun. Okay, so uh, we get all the way up to 11 meters. Now this is different from the CB 11 meters. Uh, and uh, you can uh, listen to this. Again, this is uh, seldom used because of the low solar cycle. <clears throat> okay, this is shortwaveschedule.com. And I just put in a frequency here, 5995. And you can see that uh, it will tell you what's on there, it says there are two live broadcasts right now, North Korean jamming plus Radio Mali. I don't know why uh, North Korea would be jamming, but here are the scheduled broadcasts uh, that are on uh, for um, that particular frequency. And it gives you the time, starts, ends. These are all times are in UTC. And the dates that it broadcasts are in uh, blue and the ones that it doesn't broadcast are in the uh, uh, gray. Now uh, you can uh, search a station here. Let's take that one out and put BBC in here. And we'll just take uh, BBC, just BBC. Okay. 
And here it shows uh, BBC is broadcasting on seven frequencies right now in uh, all of the languages. They have 700, 372 languages. But here you can see English, where they are broadcasting, uh, where the transmitter is, how much power they're using, and so on. Uh, you can tell that uh, they're probably uh, 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 aiming at uh, the uh, Eastern Hemisphere. Now, if you go down here, you can see that BBC has a whole bunch of scheduled broadcasts. Uh, the low, notice the low frequencies there. Those are long wave. And uh, then it will go on up into the uh, uh, short wave right here. <clears throat> and all the different languages that are being uh, used. Just a lot of them right there. So you can look up uh, the schedule. Uh, you can go in here and do live stations. Okay, the live stations. Um, these are the live stations that are available right now. Okay, 40, by the way, that's kilohertz. Everything is in kilohertz. So uh, I'm going to just stretch this out like this. And uh, we're going to go way down till we get into the actual shortwave band. Okay, and it'll tell you the frequency, what is scheduled, uh, when it is scheduled, uh, where the transmitter actually is. Very often, like BBC has got a transmitter in what looks like an Arabic-speaking area. Um, and uh, all kinds of things that you can see here with shortwave. There's a lot going on on shortwave. Now, let me mention uh, that if you send a report to one of these stations, uh, they will often send a QSL card back. Uh, you need to put in things th that they can tell that you actually listen to it, like a little bit of content or something like that. Uh, you know, news about a tidal wave, okay? And tell them that, and they'll send you a card. I have a whole bunch of cards back from when I did a whole lot of shortwave listening. Okay, this is the ICOM 7300, and I'm just showing you how you can get to the general coverage receiver. Let's push the seven. Now these are your hand bands that you can go to directly, uh, or we can do a direct frequency input. You push F input for frequency input. Now you can put in a frequency directly, like five, um, nine, seven, five, oh, oh, there you go. Okay, five, nine, seven, five, five, point nine, seven, five megahertz. And then you press enter. And now the receiver is listening to it. The spectrum scope's out of range. Uh, but you can still, uh, hear what is there. Now, if you want to go to, uh, uh, AM, press LSB, and just press AM, and you'll be hearing it as AM. Or if there's some interference on that, you can pick a sideband to listen to. You can go to either sideband. Uh, if you go to sideband here, your lower sideband, here you go hit sideband again, and it'll go to the upper sideband, uh, sideband again, lower sideband. Okay, so you see you have lots of opportunities to um, look at any frequency that you want. And if a careful reading of the manual will help you with the scope uh, too. Well, I hope you found that interesting and perhaps motivational, something to try out your radio on, usually in the evening or in the early hours of the night. Uh, to listen to the shortwave broadcast from foreign lands, uh, from sources both uh, domestic and uh, uh, from uh, uh, overseas. I remember when, uh, back during the Ford administration, we were having a, uh, a tiff with Japan. And the n newspapers were full of all the terrible things Japan was doing uh, for trade. And uh, I listened to uh, Radio Japan and got quite a different story. <laughs>
So uh, that's one thing that you can do. I remember when the first Gulf War caught everybody by surprise. Well, I had been listening to the BBC, which had been talking about the buildup of tension in the area around Kuwait. And uh, so when the war came, it was just a continuation of this tension. It was no surprise. It seemed inevitable as the escalation led uh, up to that. So you can learn quite a bit by listening to the shortwave. Um, so there you have it. I am grateful for your support. I'm grateful that you're part of this uh, community, the OG community. We call ourselves Augies. If you're a subscriber, you're an Augie. You can also become a patron. Take a look at the uh, webpage at dcastler.com support for different ways that you can help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.